I'm sorry to hear that it's it's difficult. Yeah, I once I realized that like what how would I feel if I woke up the n- next morning and I my body was male. I would feel incredibly weird about that. Although like, you know, there's plenty of times where I'm like, man, life would probably be so much easier if I was a dude. But like waking up in a body that obviously does not connect with how I view myself in my brain would be absolutely insane so like once I thought of it that way then it clicked and transgenderism made so much sense to me so the six most common biological sexes in humans many of you have expressed an interest in more of my personal essays documents I use myself to study various topics and take advantage of the so-called orangutan theory which states that forcing yourself to write down your ideas or even speaking them out loud even if your only audience is a large primate in a circus tent shifts your brain into a logical mode that gives you a better understanding of what you believe both inherently and explicitly I decided to share one of the in-progress essays and I modified it to read better online as if I were addressing the blog audience by changing a small amount of verbiage so there was a news story about a 66 year old man who discovered during a trip to the doctor that he was really a woman if you don't have a biological or genetics education background or never really took an interest in reproductive strategies of various animals and plants in nature that might seem absurd or impossible but of course it's not it's far more common than the general population realizes so that article A 66-year-old who has lived his whole life as a man was given a surprise diagnosis after visiting the doctor in Hong Kong with a swollen abdomen. He was a woman. Doctors realized that the patient was female after they found the swelling came from a large cyst on an ovary, the Hong Kong Medical Journal reported. The condition was a result of two rare genetic disorders. The subject had Turner syndrome, which affects girls and women and results from a problem with chromosomes with characteristics such as infertility and short stature. But he also had congenital adrenal hyperplasia, increased male hormones in making the patient who had a beard and a micropenis appear like a man. Were it not due to the huge ovarian cysts, this intriguing medical condition might have never been uh, discovered. The four and a half foot tall patient who grew up as an orphan was found to have no testes, a history of urinary leakage since childhood, and stopped growing after puberty at the age of 10. There have only been six cases where both genetic disorders have been reported in medical literature. Turner syndrome on its own affects only 2,500 to 3,000 females. The Vietnamese-born Chinese patient decided to continue perceiving himself as having the male gender with a possible need of testosterone replacement. Most men have an X and Y chromosome, but most women have a pair of X chromosomes. But people with Turner syndrome tend to have only one X chromosome or are missing part of their second X chromosome. So, the Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine points out that one of the more common modern cases came from 1936 Olympics, hosted by Adolf Hitler. An American named Stella Wash, commonly called Stella the Fella, crushed the competition. She always changed by herself and had muscle tissue and facial features that resembled a man. The Olympic Committee did an examination during which the members found that Stella was in fact both male and female. Sort of. She had ambiguous genitalia, and it was impossible to determine her biological sex. This remained a secret until Stella's death in 1980, where she was shot and killed in the crossfire of an armed bank robbie in Los Angeles. Today, we now have the genetic and DNA uh, testing that allows us to examine karyotypes. We know without question that humans are not just born male and female. There are at least six biological sexes that can result in fairly normal lifespans. There are actually many more than six, but they usually uh, result in spontaneous abortion as the body knows the fetus probably won't be viable, so it is flushed out of the system in a natural process meant to minimize the amount of nutrients and metabolism devoted to growing non-viable offspring that can't produce offspring. So, how you doing so far, everyone? (laughs) Um... Oh, Mike, I'm so sorry. I know job hunting can be a real um, self-esteem downer. I'm really sorry to hear that. I've I've gone through that a few times myself, too. (laughs) 
Yeah, Silver Nightwing. Waking up as a girl tomorrow with no control over your future status will be tough. Yeah. Body horror art like H.R. Geiger. Let me do a little search. Oh, wow. That's some beautiful stuff. Yeah, I've seen some of these. That's crazy. Androgen insensitivity syndrome. I've heard of that. Elves are best. Goblins are pretty cool, too. No problem, Care. Thank you so much for hanging out. You could be comfortable with yourself. I'm really glad to hear that, Relita. Um, so let's do a little bit more. The six biological karyotype sexes that do not result in death to the fetus usually are X, commonly, or roughly one in 2,000 to one in 5,000 people, which is Turner's, XX, the most common form of female, XXY, about one in 1,000 people, which is Kleinfelter, XY, the most common form of male, XYY, one out of 1,000 people, and XXXY, roughly one in 50,000 births. When you consider that there are over 7 billion people alive on this planet, there are surely tens of millions of people who are not stereotypically male or female. Many times people are unaware of their true sex. It's interesting to note that everyone assumes that they are personally XY or XX. One study in Great Britain showed that 97 out of 100 people who were XYY had no idea. They thought they were a traditional male and had few signs otherwise. Even today, we irrationally and rather stupidly think of someone as a man if they look masculine and a woman if they look feminine. It's entirely arbitrary and can lead to significant understanding, misunderstandings of how the world actually works. It is possible for your brain, your body, and your reproductive systems to all have different sexes. What makes it even more complicated is that you cannot rely on karyotype alone to determine biological sex. A few years ago, there was a story about a teenage boy who was all, in all regards, perfectly normal. He looked male, he acted male, he had a fully functional male reproductive system. He suddenly became extremely sick. He was growing sicker and sicker and could have died until it was discovered that he also had a female reproductive system internally. When he menstruated once a month, the excess blood had nowhere to go since there was no available external exit, causing it to be reabsorbed into his body. This boy was male. However, he was also female. It's a gross simpli uh, simplification to act as if he was just a boy. He was more. Even rare cases of chimeras, such as Lydia Fairchild, who have multiple sets of DNA in their body so they are not entirely the biological parents of their own children, even when conceived through regular reproduction and birth entirely naturally. The case of Riley Garant. Um... It is possible that your brain, your body, and your reproductive systems could all be different sexes, in some cases biologically one sex, but physiologically wired as another. It seems insane, but it happens regularly on an ordinary statistical distribution, so it's simply a part of human reproduction biologically. Riley Grant's body is biologically male. She has the standard XY chromosome. She has a fully functionally male reproductive system. However, Riley's brain did not develop as male during digestion and was mapped as female. We know from advances in neuroscience in the past decades that differences between the male and female brain are not insignificant and influences everything from color perception to depth perception to taste to scent to emotional reaction, empathy levels, rationale levels, pain tolerance, vocal inflection, and a host of very many other factors, uh, such as muscle mass um, uh, ratios and all of that. Um... It's easy to see on an MRI, male and female bra brains respond differently to different stimuli. The largest study documenting the extent of differences between male and females was done by Dr. Daniel A. Men, who analyzed 26,000 people and found that the male brain has heightened activities in regions associated with visual perception, tracking objects through space and form recognitions, and are about 10% larger in mass size, while female brains show more overall activity and increase blood flow to almost all 128 brain regions. So, Riley's parents realized this when they discovered her at two years old in the shower holding clippers against her penis saying, it doesn't go there. 
She kept insisting she was a girl. Sure enough, a lot of medical tests later, that turned out to be the case. That means, in this case, the physiological sex mapping of the brain is different from the biological sex of the body. Riley's brain is wired as female despite having XY chromosomes. There's no question about it. It's a fundamental, scientific, indisputable fact. It is not a mental or disorder. She was not confused. Her brain is of the same structure as a typical woman. A century ago, she would have been written off as crazy or disturbed. <laughs> Ten years ago. <laughs> unfortunately uh but our understanding of the interesting outcomes of biology now let us know that it is a very real condition based on de demonstrable facts sometimes but not always this condition is caused by a male fetus being immune to testosterone when this happens testosterone a testosterone released by the mother's body during development does not trigger the signal to map the brain as female because everyone starts off as female when they are um when they are zygotes within their mother's womb um, and the female mind is continued to be created, despite the fact that genetic instructions from other chromosomes are busy making the physical body male. The only way to remove the cognitive dissonance and prevent suicide, substance abuse, and a, other, a host of other coping mechanisms that inevitably lead to death and misery is sexual reassignment surgery, forcing the exterior body to line up with the brain. This, in fact, in effect, removes the constant exposure to said cognitive dissonance and leads to far greater physical and mental health. This is not to say everyone who wants sexual reassignment surgery is a legitimate case of brain and body mismatch. Um, some people are mentally unhealthy and fixate on the notion of being transgender as a coping mechanism for tragedy in their life, only to regret the change later. But that's usually a small percentage of people. Um, but it's still something that needs to be addressed. A sociological manifestation of this phenomenon is so-called pretendibins. Men who insist they're women, dress in women's clothing, present as women, but re uh, wish to retain their male biological parts while saying they're lesbians and want to date other lesbians. This includes having penis and vagina sexual relationships. These lesbians, who are by very de definition not interested in having penetrative sex with a biologically male body, are then accused of being transphobic and creating a cotton ceiling, a play on words that borrows from the glass ceiling and female employment in the cotton construction of a typical pair of underwear. It's disturbingly misogynistic to believe that this implies that the female biological lesbians owe their physical and emotional affection to someone who demands it and is incapable of meeting their needs. One author refers to these pretendibins as males engaged in a self-deluded form of a heterosexual kink. In any case, they do tremendous damage to the political efforts of actual transgender people, like the Riley Grants of this world, who should be protected from employment discrimination, given access to mental health resources before, during, and after transition, and support in school during early childhood while beginning hormonal treatment to rectify what is a very real biological condition and mismatching of your mind and your body. Um, men and women who fall into this fox form of transgenderism often display a litany of mental health or mood disorders. Um, so, let's see. I think there's just a little bit more to this. Just two more cases that we could talk about. The flip case of Riley Grant is now a well-documented and study case of David Reamer. He was born a boy in 1965, one of two identical twins. He was an absolutely normal XY karyotype with a fully reproductive, a uh, fully functioning reproductive system. His parents wanted him circumcised, but the doctors botched the operation so badly that they decided to castrate him and transform his body into a woman through the use of estrogen injections when the parents realized he would never have a penis or enjoy sexual relations with women. The thing at the time was a now debunked idiosity known as the blank slate theory, that humans are entirely a product of their environment and can adapt to anything. The truth is a lot of our personality is hardwired on a genetic level. Despite putting David in frilly dresses, forcing him to play with female toys and calling him Brenda, keeping the secret so no one else knew that he was born a boy, brain David's brain knew better. He kept assisting that he was not a girl. He kept insisting that he was not attracted to men, despite being told as a woman he should be. By 13, he grew suicidal as the cognitive dissonance between people telling him what he saw and when he looked, what he looked at in a mirror and what his brain knew was inherently growing, growing too great. At 14 years old, he decided to live as a man, began taking testosterone inje injection, injections and undergoing cosmetic surgery. He married a woman and became a stepfather to her kids. Only later did his parents confess what happened to him and finally decided he was willing to, and after he finally decided he was willing to live with a man even if they didn't accept it. 
Nothing the doctors could do could change the fact that David was male, nor they could change his sexual orientation despite everyone around him assisting that he was a girl and meant to date boys. His brain knew better. He was wired in a very specific way in the womb, and no amount of electric, elective cosmetic surgery or hormonal treatment could change that. Also, biological sex is not the same as gender. What causes some confusion in the general public is the use of biological sex and gender as interchangeable terms. They do not refer the, to the same thing, and that should not be occurring. Biological sex, usually determined by karyotype. The brain, the body, and the reproductive system can be different sexes. In the case of transgender people, where the brain physiology resembles that of the op opposite sex or people who are biological chimeras. Gender, mostly used for cultural behavior, such as dress mannerisms, sign of dif uh, difference, etc., that differentiate the sexes. But gender itself is not entirely a social construct. As mentioned, neuroscience research over the past few decades have indicated an overwhelming amount of evidence that gender is not a blank slate that can be imparted entirely by civilization, but has inherent characteristics that manifest regardless of upbringing or environment. This is why some fringe activists can seriously say you could be a woman with a penis while most of the world will look at them when they like they lost their mind. They inherently use the term woman to refer to gender and not biological sex. The difference in vocabulary is virtually responsible for all conflicts between groups and on this issue in this arena. They do not realize that they are using a phrase to separate to refer to two separate things that are often but not always congruent. The reality is the English language is woefully inadequate to address these biological, in some cases, psychological conditions. Unlike many ancient societies, we lack the requisite terms to make a differentiation. A person who is born male with a female brain and has sexual reassignment surgery can insist she's a woman and mentally is, but is different from a fully formed biological woman. Therein lies the problem. Native American Indian tribes, East, uh, Middle Eastern kingdoms, had words to explain these things they recognized uh, as reality a bit faster in the West than we have. It's probably time to recognize that more than 99% of us are male and female, but in a world with so many billions of people, that 1% is a heck of a lot of folks who are something else and deserve better. Trying to shove them into a binary system when the universe itself is not binary in this matter is a form of mental modeling called, called greedy reductionism. It stigmatizes them for a physical trait that is entirely benign and damages us by ignoring the reality, something, something that should be an anathema to the rational thinker. So I really like this article. I read this back in 2013. It is by Joshua Kennan, uh, has been posted June 7th, 2013 on his blog. And this is something that helped me realize um, that although I can never physically or mentally personally understand transgenderism, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the biological uh, studies and facts aren't actually there. Um, so if that's something that interests you, uh, if you want to read it more by yourself, he has some extra questions at the bottom, follow up questions for further story study. And I would do your best to not read the comments. <laughs> Um, there's over 200 of them and I'm sure none of them are great, but definitely go check out that blog. That's what I just read to you. So hope that was helpful. 